The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your garage problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up five, NASDAQ down five, S&P's flat, gold contract of $2.70 straight at $14.66 an ounce. You get silver flat, $16.87 an ounce, light sweet crude up 39 cents, $57.51 a barrel. We'll get those numbers this morning. 11 a.m., that's right. And you know what? Guess what, folks? If oil can't move and you get this cold front coming across, boy, oh, the, boy. the rest of the nation is frozen in an incredible way. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year up 10 ticks, 129.07, the 30-year up 26 at 158.14. Notes and bonds refuse to die, folks. They're back in the higher range again. You have volume coming in them, bottom line, higher price, lower yield coming at you once again. King dollar, king dollar flat at 98.370, euro is at 109, the yen is at 108.67, the pound is at 128 to 1 U.S. dollar. And needless to say, uh, which one do you want to go to? Want to go to Walmart or want to go to Disney? Disney from yesterday. Boy, oh boy, right? Oh Talk my. about some numbers, man. Disney Plus, 10 million subscribers as of day one. And they were signing people up for a month or two or three ahead of time. Uh, to put things in context, the stat I heard most startling, HBO Go took four years to hit that number. Pretty amazing. Oof. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Inks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And, folks... Don't forget, come over to our website at TFNN. If you haven't test-driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, outstanding platform, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, defined risk, all of the above. Very easy to do. Hit the banner, bring it up. You'll allow you to trade paper, paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team every trading day right here, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kevin Hanks, are you watching Disney yet? <laughs> Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Hey, I've spent my whole life watching Disney. So, you know, there's no one that doesn't think about the, the number of people in this country and then the number of and the percentage of those people that have some attachment or connection to Disney in their life. And it's pretty much all of them. I was going to joke. I was so, like, isn't it isn't it 100, Kevin? Are we at 100? It's <laughs> probably not, but it's pretty close. I agree. Tell me someone that hasn't watched, you know, Name your, your youth and the time of your youth, and everyone has that Disney movie that they saw. Mine, Jungle Book. I love it. Yeah. That, that, was the, that was the big movie when I was young, oh, was yeah. Jungle Book. You know what's so cool, man? Like, I was really thinking, I know this is like, well, I don't know if it's bizarre or not, but just like you with Jungle Book, I'm saying to myself, man, I'd like to watch some of those movies when I watch as a kid. Oh, yeah. It's a Saturday afternoon, do you know what I mean? They got it's the like, whole library, man. You know, I mean, I haven't seen them in 50 years. Yeah. It's like, you know. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And, and yep. they, they just... Was, it, it, you know, this is... I, here's what I think. I think Disney is a company. When you start looking at everything they have to offer and you start looking at the money that they can spend and the distribution channels that they have. Yes. Disney is one of those that set up, you know, the good news is for this industry, there's going to be more than one winner. Yeah. You know, right. this is not binary, right? right? It's not one winner and everyone else loses. There, there could be, people are talking about up to three or four, like 3.8 devices and up to $42 a month people are willing to spend. Seems feasible. So yeah. Easy. Right. Yeah, that, that's less than we were spending right. on cable. Right. It's I mean, a huge saving. You just want to be one of those people. Right. Yeah. You, you want to fit into that. You want to get your niche in there, and those companies will do well. Is Netflix going to be one of them? Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. So yeah. it's just a matter of who wins, but Disney has certainly – set themselves up to be one of the winners. No it's doubt. tough. I mean, who else can compete, though? Is it Netflix, right, no. for sure? you got Amazon Prime. Not on the gonna... Broadway. Not with live, live sports and news. Who's Oof. got live sports and news better than than Disney? That's, yeah. that's the know, one thing that ESPN. I agree completely, Kevin. You know, I'm going to sign up for the bundle. Right. I said, you know, yep. live is the one thing that you'll never cancel. Right. I might I might start cycling my Netflix subscription you know you yeah. binge for a few months you take a couple off and then you let the shows build up you binge it again you can't do that with live programming which is espn yeah. so where does that go right no, think about it when 21st century fox sold their their portfolio to disney what didn't they sell sports and news yeah right 
Right. right? They wouldn't let go of and because it's smart. It's because the future, that yeah. is what yeah, no, you, you know, you can archive friends and Seinfeld sure. and Cheers Simpsons, and whatever right. you want, but you can't, you can't, you can't, but you know, you can't put NFL football anywhere. No, nobody watches last week games anywhere. next no. week. Exactly. exactly. No. Yeah. Now let's. let's so look. I mean, they are well positioned. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's not going to be. It's not going to be a long road. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? yeah. These things aren't. They're not going to go through some competition and things like that. Now, Walmart, right? <laughs> they, Walmart. They, they, Talk this, about well-positioned, man. Oh, my God. These numbers, man. Yeah. They, their growth online, folks, is 46%. Amazing. I mean, yeah. And you know what I re realized, right? I guess I should have realized before. But the, the reality is is that Amazon Prime is $119. Walmart doesn't cost anything. And they were right. talking about this morning that they don't have as much for a one-day delivery, but they have all the essentials in one-day delivery. Okay. They don't pay anything. So... Right. You know, you can you can see that that that's a big number, man. That's, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and everyone can look at the, the earnings per share was good, revenue was good, but it was that e-commerce uh, growth that is really telling everyone that Walmart is not only here to stay, but they're winning in many ways. They're winning this competition, I think. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they're talking about the uh, small and Kevin. They said. It's not that they're opening more stores now either. What they're doing is that they're doing their stores over and they're concentrating on that online and they're using their stores, of course, for the delivery to the last mile. Sure. And that's, right. what, that's where the fight is about, yeah. right? The delivery to the last Tom, mile. How many, how many times have you and me and Tommy sat here and talked about the back of the stores are getting bigger and the front of the stores are getting smaller? Yeah. Same thing's going to happen in Target, yeah. right? It's, it's like Target's going to probably do better when it comes to Christmas because of their toys and their a little upscale, more cl more upscale clothing. So they're going to have a great Christmas. Well, you know, it looks like with everything that's going on, the U.S. consumer is good, but that doesn't mean there's not winners and losers in retail. Yeah. Oh, and Walmart yeah. is clearly one of the winners. And I was just yeah. going to bring it up. We had the target chart up before you even yeah, mentioned and, it, Kevin. The target's I mean, a big one. Up almost yeah. 2%. So right. the market's taking note that, yeah. you know, those big box retailers, right. man, they're here to compete in a big you, way. You can almost make the argument that target's in the best position because store name recognition, Brands. to me, brand Brands. is like huge, yeah. right? And then, yeah. you know, Amazon, yeah. you still think only online. Yep. You know, Walmart, you still thinking, you know, bricks and mortars. But yeah. Tiger, you know, when you walk into those stores, they're beautiful. Discount right. retailer, yeah. good yep. brand, right. for sure. All right. Pretty amazing, man. Hey, there's just so much going on. Yep. So today, NVIDIA and JD.com. Oh. We're going to look at those two today. More online sales, and obviously, NVIDIA is just one of the main stocks that we look at. So we'll have some fun with those two names today, for oh. sure. Yeah, big time. Folks, right here, every trading day, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, defined risk. Bottom line is that, uh, you know, at 3,092 in the S&P, 3,100, always wants to get hit again. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. The VIX is just laying there. Uh, it's a brave new world, I think, Kevin. It's, you know, pretty wild, man. Listen, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to the show in 45 minutes, Kevin. Thank you so much. Always good talking to me, O'Brien. Have a great weekend. You too, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up two. Nasdaq's down eight. S&Ps are up one and a half. And let's get over into that weed business, folks, okay? So the bottom line, canopy growth, they're blowing their brains out here. You want a pullback. Talk oh. about it. You loved it at 59. You'll love it at 15. Look at this. 1555. You're down $2.92. We're all the way back two years ago. Man. Yep. That is remarkable when you think about we're just at the forefront right now, it feels like. Well, we're yet to erase two years of growth. Right. So, you know, this is pretty intense, man. It is. I mean, so you got a couple of different breakout areas here on the way up, folks. And I'm, the first place that I'm at right now is December of 2017, yep. 1537. Now, if, if you take a look at this, when I take a look at this, it's like, okay, hold it. No, this is going to be a small ABC down. You know, the A point on this is 2889. Your B point is... Oh my God, 1789. That's 11 points, right? Yeah. Yes. That sets up, listen to this, that sets up an $11.58 stock price. And that means that you can pull, pull back to the next breakout area, which had been November of 2017. And that's really where the widest bars started to rock. You yeah. Know, you look at all these bars, these yeah. are weekly bars we're looking at. You had very little volatility. You did go from under $5 yeah. to up above 11 but you never quite had the price move it that started in November of 17. Yep. And was that when Canada legalized federally? I believe it may have been. Okay. I'm just guessing. So it's going to be been patience. Two years. It's, it's, a, it's a patience deal here, folks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they, the, the numbers, they basically come in with a monster loss. Uh, they did. Now, they beat yeah. on revenue, though. And that's where, you know, if you're a long-term buyer, I haven't even yeah. dug into the numbers, right? But yeah. if, you know, if they're growing their revenue, if you're a long-term buyer... Um, let's see. Yeah, lowest level in two years. So the revenue, well, I was saying the revenue that missed the lowest analyst estimate and the loss that, yeah, the loss was the big deal because they had charges in there. You talked about they're having returns, I guess. Yeah, having... they have a very lenient return policy, and they're saying that the oils and I guess they sell capitals. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that has been a big problem. They, they're not selling as many as that they thought, and the return on that uh, Basically, you know, 
they'd have to take a hit. So let's get into it. Canopy took a restructuring charge of 32.7 Canadian. That's about 25 million U.S. for returns, return provisions, and pricing allowances. These are primarily related to its portfolio of soft gel and oil products, which haven't been selling as well as expected. It also took an inventory charge of 15.9 Canadian million to align its portfolio with a new retailing strategy. We do not consider this type of adjustment to be one time as it reflects returns and new pricing architecture and package assortment ongoing, one analyst said at MKM, MKM Partners. Yeah. Um, the magnitude of the EBITDA loss was astounding. Canopy's excessive and equity comp policy was responsible. So equity comp policy. Uh, overall, fiscal second quarter net revenue, 76 million Canadian, well below the estimate of 102. Man, oh, man. Yeah. And a loss before interest. I mean, just huge, man. Big 155 numbers. Canadian. They had been looking for 96. Um, and they're saying that we took the necessary steps to address inventory levels on our oils and soft gels. Looking beyond this, the fundamentals are strong. CEO Mark Zeckelin said our retail store sales are growing on an overall. Can we go into the um, description? Yeah. I just want to see, like, the market cap right now, what they're getting valued at. $5.3 billion company. Yeah, I mean, what? It's still a monster number. It is a monster number, so it's intriguing, right? Then my head goes, though. Not a huge number if they come out to be the biggest cannabis company right. in Canada. Right. Because I imagine in two, three years. I mean, who's bigger than them right I now? believe they're still the biggest. That's right. Not, right? So, right. so right. I imagine in a few years, right. the biggest Canadian pot producer yeah. should be worth more than a few billion dollars. Yes. You know, that's oh, all yeah. in my head. I'm all just thinking no, fundamentally, no you know. No now, right. they, they don't have a PE because they're just right. burning cash flow. Right. So that could be where you run into a problem. They yeah. were buying the smaller companies, right? Oh, yeah. What's their debt structure look like as they're just burning cash? Right. There's a lot out there. Um, but, man, oh, man, you would not expect a pullback. And what was the what was the high they were up to, Like man? 59 or I something. think it was 59. Yeah. I and the, the, see, the, the cool thing about Canopy, folks, is that just it's going to be more patience. But that's a high-volume high, so that will get tested at some point. 59.25. I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> man, that, oh, man. That's... that's you know. I wouldn't have expected a 75% pullback. I would have expected a pullback because things got a little crazy yep. in August of 18. Right. Um, to, to put things in, con in context, that's when we had Tilray. You want to talk about oh. pullbacks yeah. of, of epic proportions <laughs> because I pulled them this back up this today. morning. Um, down another 65 cents yeah. today. You put this 300 on to 20. a two-year to bring it back to the same level. Exactly. 300 on the dot. <laughs> and that's September of 18. August was what we were just looking at. So right around the same time. Um, but Tilray, the remarkable thing is we're looking at a weekly. You're talking about from September of 18 all the way even until... January of 19, you were still above 100 bucks, right? And now you're at under 20, uh, right. 20 bucks. Yeah, huge, huge. It's, it's got a run in Denver, Colorado. What's going on, Ron? Good morning, Tom. Tony, I mean, Tommy. Morning, Ron. Anyway, uh, I was looking for some advice. Uh, I own 300 shares of Amaron, A M R N, and then I've got seven calls on a spread that expires in January, a 1725 spread. They stopped trading this morning. I just wondered how, uh, what's your experience when they stopped trading? Uh, last time uh, I was in this thing before and it ran up to 23 and I got out about half my position. Okay. And then the company did a secondary and knocked it all the way back down. And uh, so yeah. I, bought, I got back in, but I'm just, that's what I'm afraid of. If it runs up, they'll do another secondary. Okay, so... The reason that they stopped trading right now, folks, is that they're in front of the FDA meeting today. Uh, so they'll come up with a decision, um, you know, if it's not today. Most times it is. If they stop it like today, most times these are going on right now. Uh, bottom line, after the market closes, they come out with the decision. They, they, well, they tell the public what the decision is. Yeah. Um, and they may just, I mean, they could announce it midday, right? It's just so that can. I think the news they doesn't can. sneak out of that meeting That's before right. everybody's aware. Right. So to dig into it, I guess it has to do with uh, their drug, Vicepa, Ameren's fish-derived cardiovascular drug. The committee will be discussing the application to extend the label, so kind of extend what it can be used right. for, marketed for, uh, now approved to reduce triglycerides, so it can be prescribed to prevent cardiovascular events like heart attacks and stroke. Opportunity is tremendous, the article cites. 
And uh, one of the analysts projects peak sales of more than $4 billion a year for that drug if the label is expanded. And um, so I guess they, they left 23% on Tuesday after the FDA released a briefing document for the meeting. Okay, so, so there's already been some, and that's maybe why they said, okay, there's already been a little craziness around this. We better make sure that we contain, you know, the unfair advantage of news sneaking out. Yeah, so it looks like you're going to be in pretty good shape, man. I mean, this looks to well, me. Yeah, but what I'm afraid of, you know, runs up there and they do another secondary and knock it down. Yeah. Would you sell the stock or do you, since I have options, should I sell the stock into the strength? Well, Should I sell half? Should I, uh... I'd, I'd, yeah, just stay right there with us, all right? Stay right there. We'll come right back, folks. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. And market-wise out here, oh, in fact, we get natural gas. Yeah, you know, we'll be coming back at 1030. We'll find out those natural, natural gas, gas inventory numbers. Then See we get that market. Uh, oil at 11. Oil at 11. Dow, Dow's down 9, Dow's up 10, S&P's up 2.5. We'll come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 7, Nasdaq's up 12, S&P's are up 1.5. We're talking to Ron from Denver. We're talking about uh, AMRN. Now, it's pretty wild, AMRN. Um, Ron, is that when we were taking a look at this, I, I, you know, we had, you had the CEO as well as the chairman of the board sell some shares on the 11th. 
some as in a CEO lot. selling 500,000 shares worth right. $10 million. What price, what price approximately? He sold them on the 11th, so it was before the two-day pop-up we just got. But right. you're still talking about selling them at, you know, whether it's $17, okay. $18. November 11th, oh. Yes, yeah. just two days ago, exactly. Right. Wow. And you also okay. had the chairman selling 40,000 shares. Now, to put it in context, the CEO still has two to two and a half million shares left. Shares, he sold yeah. about 500,000, so he's still got 40 to $50 million of equity in the company. He sold maybe $10 million. But I was saying well, it. If I was going to sell, say, half of mine, what price would you suggest I put in now? I would, so I now. would, I would put your, your last high up here is twenty three, ninety one. I mean, the, the the let's see. So if you put, I want to make sure I sell. Do you think twenty three? Well, what it is is that what you don't want to do is this. See, the news is going to come out, right? So yeah. if it turns around and you got a sell in at 23. Well, the market itself, once they open, is going to take yours out yeah. first, even if it goes to 35. I agree. That's you what I was waiting to hear you say. Yeah, but I still have half of the position and I still have my options. Yeah, but why, yeah. why can't you wait just till the news is out and then sell it that second? You see I, what I'm saying? Then put the order in. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, you know, kind of where. I mean, you don't know how high this could go on that news, right. Ron. You know, I mean, it could yeah. pop to 35, like he's saying, in a heartbeat. Right. And it'd be a shame that they just pick you off on the way up, even right. though they know that that's not a fair price on the news. You right. know? Because once. Okay. Because they'll, they'll. So what I would do is that, yeah, I'd move. I'd be prepared to move this thing out and set it up on your screens, uh, particularly in the option market. OK, that you have yeah. those bids in, because if it's a if it's a big number. What would end up happening would spike to a big number, and I think it pulled right back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I would say buy the buy the rumor, sell the news, yeah. right? Right. The rumor's out right. there. If they actually get it, yeah. I, yeah. I would. I mean, there's not. Right. That's going to be the All the right. peak exuberance, well, maybe. Because they're still going to need money. Drug because it, it it saved my gal's life. She wow. had triglyceride levels. She got real sick. She went in there. Her triglycerides were 2,300. I told her about this drug getting approved. She went and asked her doctor. Her doctor said, I never heard of it. He said, but it's approved, so I'll give it to you. In a in week and a half, her triglycerides dropped from 2,300 to 230. Wow, Saved that's pretty cool. And, and what is a triglyceride? How does that work? Well, triglycerides, they kill, they're, they're, they're even worse than strokes. Really? Uh, you know, I mean, that just, yeah. it's, it's like a, I'm not sure what the type is right. It just, it's in your blood arteries. It's like a I see. high cholesterol and high triglycerides, but triglycerides are even worse. Okay. Okay. It's in your blood. It's okay. in your blood and it's even worse than a stroke. Yeah. That's pretty intense, man. Yeah. And, 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 and if it's over two thirty over 200, it's considered bad over 500, 700, it's serious. Hers were at 2,300, and she was really feeling bad, and she, she took this thing and dropped down to 230. That's so cool, man. Now, that was a, after about a week and a half, and that was a couple months ago. Yeah, that's a big number, man. And she's been feeling great ever since. Yeah. So, and, uh, well, I would the just... Doctors, the doctor hasn't even heard of the drug. She had to ask him about it. Yeah, well, there you go, you know. And, uh, so... so, anyway, I, it's works. It's just a matter of what is it worth. That's you know, correct. I we'll, mean, we'll the, way, the way that... I would look at this, and even Tommy, when we were talking, you know, at the commercial, you know, it's not that the CEO sold a lot, 500000 yeah. compared to what he has, but the reality is if, if he thought that, you know, the bottom line is it's just like this, the story that you just related to us, right? If, you know, you hear that type of story, and it's like, okay, if I'm going to do numbers, why would why you, would you sell anything? Why would you ever? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. If so he it, sold some, I better make sure I at least sell. Yeah, right, because it looks like hold it, on the options. Because what does happen here is this. It, they're still losing money. It looks like they're going to need more money, so yeah. they may do another secondary or a third out there. Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah, you know, that's what they did last time, right. and, and right. I imagine they'll do it again. It was just at $3.00. Uh, 14 months ago. Yeah. So, uh, right. you know, you get one more pop in there, maybe maybe that's what the CEO, <laughs> yeah. would, you know, decide to pair some of that. Which would make Even sense. if he fully believes in totally. it. It just yeah. might be priced in somewhat. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. Well, they got approved last, I don't know, December, November, December, they got approved. It's out of Ireland. And no one's heard of it hardly. And but uh, Quite a drug. It's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. Ron. Okay. You yeah. have a great one, a safe one. Appreciate it, Ron. Thanks for the call, Thank man. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the Thank advice. You. Thank you. Thank you. Natural gas. Yeah, let's see what we got going on. All right, natural gas. We'll get into our contract. We get the December contract. We're going to pull up the news here to see what we have happening in the inventory market. Just three.
3 billion cubic feet the rise. Okay. But we have more natural gas, and the real question is, let's jump over to the charts. We'll see how we're trading. I'm pulling up natural gas. Yeah, that's still a build. That's interesting. It is. Everything's right. expectation, right? We'll see. I'm not sure what the expected build was. We're trading at 264 right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like we got a little bit of a drop in price. Yeah. Because it's saying, hey, man, it's, it's, it's well, uh, last, this is last week's number, but even yes. so, it's like, you know, if next week's number ever comes in with a build of even one, it would be like, what? <laughs> yeah. So we're up at almost 269. We're trading about five pennies below that 264.6 in the price of natural gas right now. Um, I'm just going to minimize this for a second, see if they come up. Uh... Okay, median estimate was unchanged. Okay. So a yeah. little bit more natural gas than they thought, a yeah. little bit lower price than they're thinking uh, as well. With that in mind, let's stay on energy and look at crude oil, all right? So yeah. we've got crude oil numbers coming up at 11 a.m. 18.8 minutes. That's right. Minutes, That's seconds. right, man. So crude oil, we're looking for a build of about 1.5 million barrels. Oh, we moved up two ranks. Too. Maybe 1.4. We're 13 now. Okay. And uh, that number coming in at 11 a.m. today as opposed to usually Wednesday at 1030 because of the Monday Veterans Day holiday. Let's jump back and see how crude's been trading this morning and see what kind of volatility they're pricing into the market here. Now, normally, we get the numbers at 1030, so we might look at the 11 a.m. expirations, Correct. right? Don't do that if you're looking for the number, no. folks, because they, they expire right when the number's going to be released. So we'll start off with the noons. We're looking at the December contract. We're trading at $57.69. You do have contracts that line up with volatility from 57.50. Not bad. No. Especially, you know, I like to point out this is where really it's a sweet spot if you're bullish because you're slightly in the money. You know, just think of it like options, right? You're not paying a, a ridiculous amount of premium for an right. out-of-the-money lottery ticket. You're, you're getting in. You're able to buy at 57.80. You're 13 ticks above the market. It's trading at 57.67. And for that premium, you're capped with $30 of loss, which is you're capped at 57.50 for yeah. your loss, and you have a profit potential all the way up to 59. If you're looking at $30 on the bullish side. If you want to turn this into a pure volatility trade, it would still have a bullish bias because you have such a head start. But the bearish one would be about 11 bucks. You're talking about $41 or 41 cents away from 57.50, and uh, you have exposure in both directions. Now let's just see how the 230s line up. 57.50, it's going to be the same. I just want to see if we get a 57.75 because that would be a little closer. So let's just see what they're going to charge us for the extra two and a half hours here now. And you have a bigger run up to these are three dollar spreads oh, yeah. now okay big money so this is great when you compare the two of them so on the right i have the noon expiration and we'll finish this up you're able to buy a 57.78 you want to pay a little bit more price you have until 230 and you have a run all the way up till 60.50 the bullish side alone not bad man not 35 bucks you're capped at 57.50 and you have almost limitless potential because you got three dollars of upside stay right there folks tommy and I, tommy and i come right back If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And you talk about the Federal Reserve, folks. One of our tigresses this morning put this in the den, and this is pretty intense, folks. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I've ever seen the, this many Fed folks talking in the same day. So check this out. At 9 a.m., we had uh, Richard Clarida. Uh, at 9.10, you got Evans. At 10 o'clock, I believe Powell's still speaking. At 11.45, you get Daly. At 12, you got Williams. At 12.20, you got Bullard. And at 1 o'clock, you got Kaplan. They say, lucky number seven. That's, that's pretty wild, man. That I mean, is. They're, they're out here, and they, of course... Uh, that's some serious Fed speak. Isn't it? I, I, I had to do a kind of a double take when I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a big number, man. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. Now, let's go over to the bond market for a second, because this is, you know, for the S&Ps only being down two... The bond market, folks, got back inside its range. And, you know, it has volume out here today. You know, we had 926,000 contracts. You know, the, the range there for the 10-year is 128.16. And, you know, bottom line is that we're at 129.07. The 30-year, right now we're, that's, that's a lot of volume in the 30-year. We had 159,000 already in the 30-year. And... The range to get back inside on that one was 157.17. Okay. And, you know, it already hit 157, 158.17. Yeah. And where are we sitting in the yields? Let's go to. So 1.82. 1 1.82. And we, we got up to that. It was at 1.94. Yeah. You know, yep. so. And what are we doing for curves? Let's see. There's, there's no inversion anymore, man. No. We, I mean, remarkable, right? We had the 210 inversion, got talked about for a while. The 2 now sitting at 1.6. The 10-year, almost a quarter percent above 1. it 1.8. Pretty remarkable. 1.83. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. right there for sure. Big numbers. Big numbers. Yep. Uh, Cisco. Cisco came out with their numbers last night. You know, bottom line is that this, uh, this little baby is uh, saying that they're going to slow down right across the world. Uh, Cisco. Uh, now, this is, this is a monster company, but when you see the... So they design, manufacture, internet protocol, networking equipment. So TCP, IP. Yeah, right. and so all the big server farms, folks, need Cisco. That's, that's what it comes down to. The low for the S40, the high is 58. I was going to say $190 billion company. Yeah. Decent, decent size. Look at the, the shares, $4.2 billion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talk about all the time, right? I mean, in terms of just a share price is an arbitrary number, man. Yeah. You know? Um, and you know what? It looks to me like you're going to have an ABC down here. And if that's the case, this would be, I wonder if it's on a weekly too. Yeah. Well, let's see. We're below those lows. Yeah. 154 million. I don't, think, 89. We'll, I don't yeah, think we'll do it. It's be hard Thursday. To do. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, that being said though, guess what? You know, look at this over here. You get 
that's the high of what's that February of 2018 is yes. 41 bucks. That's probably game. That's that's no doubt a big number. Can we go into WIRP? I'd like to see as we get Fed Speak Day. What, yes. are, what are we pricing in for future cuts here? I, I imagine relatively low numbers. Yeah. So. The current column, where we currently sit, 1.5 to 1.75, right? You get the next meeting coming up December 11th, marginal, 7% right. chance we cut. You, you get a quarter percent, 25% uh, chance, I should say, that we get a quarter basis, quarter percentage point cut by January. And you get just kind of hang out from between, you know, that number, really. And it doesn't get above 50% until June when you combined the odds of a two cuts, with one cut, you're at about 53% to 44. But still, there's a 40% chance that we stay where we're at through, yes. through July. There's almost a 35% chance we stay where we're at through September. Um, yeah. You know? it's, it's basically saying that, you know, that the Fed's done right now. Yeah. And, hey, that's what the chairman's out there saying. Yeah. Unless we get. Unless, <laughs> right? And, hey, if we start getting some big trade concerns, that's the real worry is, like, so what's going on in the market, right? Does the market, is the market saying we're addressing the trade concerns, but we're now not even worried about that? Because yesterday's revelation, man, soybeans was supposed to be easy. The easiest. It, well, what's easier? Right. You know, right. I mean, they, they, they don't want to put a number on how many soybeans they're going to buy. Right. And you think we're going to be able to tackle anything like intellectual property right. problems in, in China? Uh, we'll number. see about that. Yeah. Now, and, and what ends up happening, and we, we start talking to the Fed, if they keep buying bonds like this, folks, what happened last time is that the actual physical bond market itself, the market basically was pushing the Fed. Because the Fed kept saying that, no, we're not going down on rates. Well, the, the, the note bond market almost went to an all-time high. It's yeah. like, well, you might not want to do it, but guess what? We're going to put these in our portfolio and, uh, you know, bottom line is that uh, it, it finally pushed them. Now, in this particular case, there's no doubt we get a flat market out here. Now, I was just going to jump back, if I could, jumping back a little bit. But Walmart, the, the actual numbers they pulled in, man, just absolutely staggering, right? You're talking no, no, about, no. Uh, now, what did they just pull in? Where uh, are we here? Uh, one, oh, uh, well, they're on fiscal year 2020, $128 billion. That makes sense? Yeah. The third that, quarter that, of 2020? Yeah. No? They, they could have started the 2020 in July. Well, that wouldn't earlier. be third. Yeah, that wouldn't be. We're in 2019. They can't be in the third quarter of 2020 right now. I know that's what this is saying, right? But you see what I'm saying? I do. Okay. So I we'll do. have to fight through it. I'm not sure. But you know what? They take in a half billion, half trillion. Look at this. Is why I, I stagger. Half a trillion dollars a year. Right. Um, that they take in, man. And uh, yeah. And this, this is the bottom line. They're saying they're taking a buck sixteen. Dollar sixteen. Yeah. I wonder how this goes. We'll have to figure it out. I think they got something skewed up here, man, because there's no way that they're in the third quarter of their 2020 fiscal year. And that's, that is what this is saying, that they just reported. Whoops, what's going on? Maybe Bloomberg's firing off on all cylinders here. So let's see. Uh, they're saying Q3. I feel like that's going to be Q3. of. Who knows? How does that happen? Talk about playing. Yeah, it is Q3 of fiscal year 20. Come on, how do, you, how do you talk about playing games with numbers, man? They just reported their third quarter of 2020. Right. Well, I hate to break it to them, but it's, it's November of 2019. So watch what happens now. This is what you can't do anymore is that the, when you have a C corporation, right, you could make your um, starting date any time that you'd like, meaning it doesn't have to be a calendar year, January to January. Sure. Right? Now, you cannot do that anymore. If you have a C corporation, it has to be calendar year, and the reason is that when you have a C corporation that is off the calendar year, what ends up happening, you can use your subsidiaries to move your money around sure. as you're filing your taxes every year. Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty cool just looking at that. I suspect, you know, you'll see all the, um, basically all the big C corporations, many of them do not have a calendar year specifically for that because what yeah. ends up happening, if you get something weak, you can move it legally. This is, the, I'm sure. talking about cooking the books. I'm talking about legally how this works. And the big number to keep in mind here, 41% e-commerce growth. That's huge, man. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, where is their comp Operating sales? Operating income, 6.1%. It's a big number. Uh, Sam's Club, uh, that's decreased 6 tenths of 1%. Yeah. 
announced delivery unlimited the grocery delivery membership option to 1400 stores there you go don't forget, folks, 11 o'clock, we're going to get the oil as well as the gas on uh, TD Ameritrade and beyond, but you keep that on your radar. That's Tommy right. and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30 percent this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials right now. Where? Drum roll, please. There we go. Oh, look at that. Someone just happened to the Dow. Dow's down 30. Nasdaq's off 19. S&P's off 4. Flat market out here, really. Yeah. Uh, once again. You know. Can we go into the movers in the Dow? Yes. I uh, wonder. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, one more time. Yesterday, it was all about Disney. And that was quite a move yeah. intraday. And Disney extending them yeah. again today. They are. Yeah. I was, I was thinking it might be Walmart. But it won't be Walmart because they're not that high of a price stock. Look at that. 3M plus 10 points, Home Depot 9, Walmart 8. Yeah, Walmart's only $122 stock. They're getting a $1.21 gain, um, yeah, but only 8 points. Yeah. Taking away from it, Cisco minus 25, Apple minus 7, Visa minus 6. And let's take a look at Walmart, man, because that's, they're, they're pairing some of that. I'm going to put this on a 5-minute because it was quite a spike early this morning on Walmart. And check out the paired gains. Yeah, I, I, I was keeping my eye on this, man, and... 125.69. You're almost three dollars off that number. Yeah. I mean, you're barely up 1.6 percent right now, and you were up dramatically in the market. I don't know. They're, they're just pairing some of the gains. Let's see how Target's reacting. 
Um, I, oh, Target not pairing. Maybe the market kind of talking about what you, Kevin, myself were talking about yeah. earlier. You know what? That's what's happening. Maybe Target's one that's that's ripe for the picking coming into that holiday season yeah. as well. Yeah, there's, there's no there's no doubt. The uh, holiday season, man. Hol Christmas, holiday season. Black Friday. We're gonna start getting those Amazon sales. Yeah. Is Amazon gonna sell thirty eight billion dollars worth of goods during no. Black Friday like Alibaba? I don't no. think so. But no. I'm sure they'll have some staggering numbers it's, themselves. It's it's no doubt. It's no doubt. It's a big number. Yeah. Let's just go inside. Uh, no, we won't go inside the NDX right now. Folks, stay right there. We got our man, Mr. Kevin Inks, TD Romero Trade coming up next. Then we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Go get him, folks.